We've been working with three uh, Nibs bands today on the history of brass instruments, mainly in the long 19th century, which is from a bit before the Battle of Waterloo to the First World War. And what we've been trying to do is to show these young people what these instruments can do and how exciting they are, with, uh, especially how exciting the music is to play. Yeah, uh, the, the thing is difficult to, for most people who play brass instruments these days is just how exceptional and extraordinary they are and where they came from. You know, and so we showed that over the first sort of 4,000 years of civilization of development, they just were sort of li really tubes that got a little bit more complicated. And then there was this incredible explosion with the invention of the valve in the Industrial Revolution. And suddenly, with the chromatization of brass instruments, they could play almost anything. You know, and then, and uh, the, the 19th century was just an extraordinary time for brass bands especially you know and Britain was the center of it and by the end of the 19th century it was something like 30,000 brass bands in Britain with about a million players and uh, brass bands you know toured the world like Alex Owen with Bessie's of the Barn Band and they played to a hundred thousand people in Melbourne they were like the pop groups and the iTunes of, uh, 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 of the day and uh, all of that repertoire is gradually getting lost to us and so we just thought we'd give it back to the to the students here and I think they, they were lapping it up. Absolutely. Yeah. And can you imagine that the most famous brass group in the 19th century, the Distant Quintet, they were so famous that they had mugs made in with their faces on. They had portraits done of them. They were like as famous as any pop group you can think of today, even more famous than the Beatles. Uh -huh. And yet, they've only recently been rediscovered, and we still now don't really know what they played. And we've seen some of the music, but we don't really know what they sounded like. So just that whole idea of brass archaeology is fabulous. It's like taking a painting which has been tainted over the years with lots of smoke and horrible things, and cleaning it all away, and you see the colours for the first time. So having these fresh, vibrant colours, that's exactly what it's like when you hear these instruments. And we wanted to flag up to the students what was happening at the Northern in Manchester and the Conservatoire in Glasgow, because we've got this big research project up on all of this, because the Northern has now got all of the Philip Jones brass archives, and we at, in Glasgow, uh, we've got the John Webb Historic Brass Collection and a whole load of other archival stuff, including the Enderby Jackson uh, concert programmes and contest programmes from uh, about the 1847 onwards, you know, when they, his first big band contest, he held it in Hull and 17,000 people bought cheap day return tickets to go to Hull, you know. And uh, so we've got all of that, all, all, all of that, that heritage. And uh, the, the, uh, the other thing that concerns us is that this fantastic music is really undervalued and looked down on, you know, as being slightly vulgar and below the salt. And actually, when you explore it and look at it, the Air Veri, for example, you know, is dissed as a sort of formulaic thing, but the Air Veris were found by Alexander Owen and John Hartman and William Wider and all of these people are, are, are fantastic. They're rhapsodic and they're like grand fantasias. And uh, so we, th and we think there's a big repertoire there that the, the kids would love to play. And what kind of reaction have you had today? Have they been really buying into what you were talking about? Oh, they've been really engaged. Um, you know, the, to see a young person's eyes light up when you play a serpent or when you get a, a cornet with a, an echo bell on it, uh, it is absolutely remarkable. And one of the things that we're really excited about is that these young people are, are going to be playing some of the music that we found. So we, we've got our arrangements from the mid 19th century from a famous band called the Kafatha Band, Merthyr Tidville in Wales. We've got the original arrangements for instruments like the keyed bugle, ophiclide, cornet in A flat, all these really obscure instruments. And we've handcrafted them for modern brass band. 
and we're really excited that the young people on this course are going to be playing some of those arrangements in the concert on Saturday. How important is it that young players, as part of their learning and learning that they do on courses like this, find out about the history of the brass playing? Well, I, I think if you don't know about the history, it's very important, it's very difficult to contextualise the present. So you really do need to know where you come from to know where you're going to be going in the future. Yes, and uh, I, I think, uh, you know, the the knowledge is that the <laughs> students on, the, on this course are very hungry for knowledge and for music. Uh, words they listen less to, pictures they like, but what really turns them on is playing to them. Yeah. So we both play to them a little bit today. And um, what I like doing when I'm playing a solo thing to, is to tease them with tempo and rubato and colours. And what is amazing about a bunch <laughs> of kids like this is that they've got the ear for that. You know, they've played in these, and brass bands have been brought up by experts and they've got fantastic ears for listening so you can use that means of communication much better than 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 words so they're alive to rubato they're alive to you putting on a bit of vibrato here they're alive to you speeding up and slowing down and um and so that and uh, that's what i i find, found that they were you know at the end of course a lot of them are scottish I know there's some come up from the, the north of England. They're quite inhibited to ask questions in front of everybody else, but they came up crowding at the end and said, oh, can I have a shot of this? Can I do that? Well, I would like to do this. I would like to do that. And uh, that, that was great. The ones who were most wanting to ask the questions were the young ones, and that was great. We couldn't mm. shut up the questions there. The hands were going up all over, all over, the, all over the place. So it was, it was I, I found it really exciting and I, I just think that young people are, are, are wonderful. I don't believe all the, you know, the Armageddon or where we're going to, they're all on their sort of Xboxes all the time. I, I don't hear, they're, they're on the baritone or the horn or the trombone all the time here.